people of YouTube. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Molly. Today I thought I would share my labour story because it's actually not that bad. My due date was estimated to be the 22nd of November. I was four days late. You can work out the maths and do that yourself if you want to actually know my baby's birthday. <laughs> On my actual due date, there was no sign of my baby girl coming so on that day I went straight to the midwife to get induced that wasn't a great experience because she first checked the baby's heartbeat to see if she was okay for it to all happen but her heart rate was a bit high so, so she wasn't comfortable doing it at the children's centre I had to go to hospital for it which was absolutely fine they just wanted to monitor her her heartbeat and my blood pressure to make sure that everything was okay. My blood pressure was a bit high, but because I was on my due date, or it was the day after, um, that was completely normal for my uh, blood pressure to be a little bit higher than usual. But her heart rate came, far, came straight down, like to normal. Um, I think she, she was quite a wriggler she was she was always moving so I think that was what the problem was so by that time I was actually I had my sweep they literally just get um, some fingers up there and they had they go all the way around the cervix to try and open it up a little to see if they can get something going it was a little bit painful <laughs> and then they send you home um, I started to feel a little bit like tender, like a little, little faint pains as I would describe them um, throughout the evening and then nothing really. I fell asleep watching a Scooby Doo movie on Netflix. <laughs> um, then I woke up at around 3 o'clock in the morning to my water's breaking in bed which was absolutely fun because I was already prepared I already had a maternity um, a maternity towel in my in my pants and no and I did not get my waters breaking all over my bed oh they were completely dry thank goodness the feeling of your waters breaking is not like weeing yourself at all it feels like I would say it feels like you know when you are on your period and you've not got a tampon on you've got a sanitary towel on instead and you can feel the blood coming out that's what it feels like it does not feel like peeing yourself at all I don't know who said that <laughs> yeah, that happened um, it wasn't there wasn't loads but it was still enough um, I hadn't started having contractions yet but I called the maternity unit straight away and said my waters have broken they asked me were the water was the water clear and it actually wasn't it was a little bit greeny kind of color um I'm not entirely sure why so neither were they so they wanted me to come in just to check that everything was okay with the baby and me at this point I was starting to have some contractions and it they were like period pains like very faint period pains and then they started to get really really painful but they were still too far apart but they still wanted me to go in because they asked me to for my waters so they checked me over everything was absolutely fine they think that the um, the greeny color was left of the of my plug coming out still yeah I was only dilated three centimeters no two centimeters so they said that's not enough for you to stay in and wait you'll have to go home and then come back when your contractions are a bit more close together you're having three in ten minutes and they need to be lasting at least one minute at a time something like that so yeah that started at three o'clock we we got home again at around about ooh, seven to half seven i want to say um at this point I was in I wasn't in agony or in pain it was just you know when some you're in that kind of pain where it's kind of like annoying you're just like 
oh yeah that's what I was doing I was just trying to concentrate on my breathing because it was just annoying more than anything and I couldn't get comfortable anyway I sat it the pain got worse so I was just literally moving around like crazy like in different sitting positions and then I finally got comfortable on my um on my armchair in the living room oh yeah forgot when my waters broke it wasn't my all of my waters it was the back waters I didn't realize you had back and front waters I literally had no idea what that meant so I was like okay yeah it kind of makes sense so it was literally only my back waters that broke and they needed the rest of that to come out and I didn't realize this so yeah go back to where I was yeah sitting on my armchair having a, having a few contractions at that point and then I felt the urge that I wanted to push. I can't tell you exactly how that feels, but you just know it's really strange. You just feel like you want to push, and that's what I that's I just couldn't help it. I wasn't horribly pushing, but I was just going <clears throat> kind of like that. <laughs> when I did that, the rest of my waters broke, and then that's when more contractions started coming in. They were a lot closer together. My part, I could not speak at all. Literally, I, I just, I just couldn't speak. I just said to my, what I kind of signaled to my partner, call, <laughs> call the maternity unit, see if we need to go in. He kind of knew, he knew what he was doing. He was absolutely brilliant through this whole thing. So yeah, um, they, he had them on loudspeaker, and. Um, they were trying to speak to me but they could tell that I wasn't really talking that much and one, as soon as my partner said to them she said that she feels like she wants to push and as soon as I said that they was like okay bring her in so yeah we got there oh it was awful there was nowhere to park so we was literally going round and round this bloody car park for ages and then I was just like I'm gonna have this baby in this car and it's gonna be bloody awful. We eventually got there, I felt like I could barely walk. My partner had to hold me up kind of thing. Um, found a wheelchair as soon as I could. <laughs> um, I was trying to keep myself calm, I was trying to con concentrate on my breathing. That was the best thing I felt like for me to do. Because of the pain, just concentrate on the breathing. If I couldn't talk, it didn't matter. I We already packed all, all of the hospital stuff about a month ago, just so it was ready, because you never know. So we already had everything we needed in the car, and we were all good. My partner knew exactly what needed to be given to the, the people at the desk, and then someone came straight away. Yeah, had check, got checked over, I was four centimeters, so I could go straight to a delivery room. Uh, my midwife came. I had a male midwife. He was absolutely brilliant. It took me to the delivery room. He was so calm. The whole thing was so calm. But yeah, he asked um, my partner what if I had a plan. My plan was I just want gas and air. If I need anything else, I will need something else. If it's if I. If they feel like I really need to have some more pain relief or an epidural or anything but all I wanted at that point was gas and air so the midwife sorted that out he told me how to do it he showed me and I started doing it and then that's when I could start talking again it took the edge off quite a bit it made me feel like I could okay right now I've got that under control I can get changed because I was in like tracky bottoms and, a middle, and one of my last maternity tops and I was like I cannot, I've got to really get changed so I, what I took with me was a big shirt nighty that you can find in Primark for like £6 I took something like that because I was going to breastfeed so that was easy to give birth in and then to breastfeed afterwards I brought a couple of them with me of course so I got changed into that and then my back started to really hurt so I was like no I can't stand up anymore I think I started to lay down at that point yep and in the delivery room I had my partner and my mum with me 
because they're they kind of balance each other out kind of thing so when did we go back so yeah the rest of my water's broke at probably about half past nine in the morning so we got we got into a delivery suite at around about 10 o'clock half 10 o'clock um it was very calm everything was really calm everything was running really smoothly which was really what i wanted and then it's really weird when you are contracting and your cervix is getting bigger ready for the baby to come out it's like you can kind you can kind of feel something shift and you you can just feel it something shift and you're like something feels different that's what i kept saying probably about an hour later or something like that i said something feels really different i'm it's like okay we'll check it's a bit early but then i was already I was, um, then he said, oh, you're nine centimetres? And he said, oh, that was, and he, the look on his face was like, is that okay? He's like, yeah, that's just pretty quick for your first child, because you got in here about an hour ago. Then probably about, um, it felt, it went so quickly. So it was probably about 20 minutes later, I was ready to push. <sighs> okay, so literally we were all ready i had my partner this side my mum that side they were both so supportive i'm so glad i had both of them in there with me um a doctor came in at one point um and said oh you're pushing already like yep this baby is coming out he she wants to get out now <laughs> yeah i started pushing and literally all the all the midwives will say to you is just push like you're pushing out a big poo push from underneath go on push like you're pushing out a big poo it was just so funny i was trying to concentrate on literally pushing out the baby but i was thinking am i gonna poo it's really strange they start they tell you that you just gotta literally push until you literally can't breathe kind of thing and that's what i was doing i need some water and one thing that people do say ring of fire it burns <laughs> it's not I didn't find it awful but you could definitely feel like a burning at one point when I think that's the point where baby's head is like literally halfway out kind of thing I was still taking the gas and air but then when I started um, pushing I felt like it was just getting in the way so I, I said to my wife, I feel like this isn't working. It, it doesn't feel any different. He said, well, do this next push. Do this next con like this next push without it and see how you feel. I literally did and I was like, yeah, there's no difference. Get that out of my way. That is literally just slowing me down. <laughs> so I, I did do most of my pushing, well, nearly all of my pushing without any gas and air, any pain relief. I just did it. I don't know how I did it. I just felt it just didn't feel like that painful for me which is really lucky I know a lot of other women really struggle with their pain and I'm so glad and so lucky that I didn't <laughs> I'm really sorry but I'm just hor I'm just bragging that I was not in pain in my labor I'm so sorry <laughs> at the time it felt like I was pushing for a long long time but when looking back on it it d it felt it just went so quickly it went so so quickly my whole active labor was under three hours that's fast for your first baby it's so strange to think about it now so yeah she came out <laughs> she came out and they she got put straight onto my chest to do skin to skin skin to skin straight away the most strangest thing was that she didn't scream like in the movies you know as soon as a baby comes out they're like Wah! but no, she didn't make any kind of sound she it was just her eyes were just like readjusting to the light bless her and her re at first we was really really scared because her reflexes weren't working she was just a big flop and so so the midwife and the doctor quickly had to take her off me to go and check to see if she was okay but she was absolutely fine she was just lazy literally she is me <laughs> she was just lazy and then she did a little squeal and then she got put straight back on me 
I just, I think with, um, a few months before, we already picked a name and we said we shouldn't really settle on that name because she might be something else but then as soon as we saw her we were just like yeah that's her name that's her name it, it was a beautiful beautiful moment of love and I wouldn't have wished it any other way in the end I did have to have quite a few stitches and she was born at 1.22 in the afternoon and think about it that's quite quick for a first time and I'm so happy <laughs> the midwife even turned to me and said if you're thinking about having another one you may want to consider a home birth like so that means I'm not gonna get to a hospital in time with my next one because of how quick my first one was which is quite it's all right I'll take that I'll take that I am so lucky and so happy with how my labor went I I couldn't imagine it any more nicer than how it was. I can look back on it and think everything was so calm. Everything went how I wanted it to go. And I can look back at it and think that it wasn't a traumatic experience. It was a really loving and beautiful day. It was, it really was. How cringy that sounds, but it was. I'll never forget the look on my partner's face when he saw our baby for the first time. It's nice. It's... It's amazing. <laughs> but the aftercare... Ugh! Oh. When, when you first get up from having that baby, from having a baby, I think I was sat there for ages with her just on my chest for so long she was just this beautiful squidgy little thing and she just kept looking at me so, my baby, baby is just she just kept looking at me and, and her dad it was it was lovely I just didn't want to get up but and obviously I had to eventually because I need like need to get sorted out so before they gave me my stitches I did have to go and see if I needed a wee or anything like that which I did oh my god Prepare yourself for when you go to the toilet for the next few weeks, maybe. You will literally hate going for a wee. I think <laughs> I have tried to avoid going to the toilet, which was really bad for me. <laughs> but, oh my God, it stings so, so much. I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it. It is horrible, absolutely horrible going for a wee after you've been, oh. Ooh, and obviously <laughs> it's not that bad going for a poo if you did rip or if you did have to have stitches down there there as well which I did it's not that bad you just drink lots and lots of water so it's not gonna be a big poo if you know what I mean but going for a wee is always always gonna hurt afterwards um, what I tried to do um, was step in the shower and get the shower head and, and go for a wee while you've got a shower head kind of there because then it can kind of ease the pain a little bit so that you've got nice fresh water running down and not just not just wee <laughs> but no that's that's the only really bad thing um it will take you a while to get up and down and stuff like that but i'm still so lucky to have a really nice experience so yeah, that's my little story time, labour story. For me, it was a good one, which I'm so happy about. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed listening to my labour story. If you have any other questions about aftercare, what I took in my hospital bag, just leave a comment below and I'll answer it, or maybe I'll do another video about what I took in my hospital bag and if I took too much, because I definitely did. Give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and ring that notification bell to see the next time that I post. And I'll see you later guys, bye.